unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Hallelujah. Let's worship God in a song. I feel the presence of God. Somebody speak in other tongues. I feel power. I feel power. I feel power. A heart disease is being healed right now. Heart disease. Somebody came with a pain in your heart. God is healing you right now. There's somebody I feel God has just healed. You came with pain on your heart. Where are you? Put up your hand. Just wave like this. I feel somebody's heart has been healed. It has gone. How long has it been? You came with it. It has just left. Hallelujah. Somebody clap for Jesus. I feel God is healing. More than just the pain. More than just the pain. Your heart is healed. I feel there's another two who came with heart pain. Just wave wherever you are. You check yourself. You came with the pain. Check yourself. There's one there. There's another one. Also, you just gone. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of God here. There is somebody. Your legs swell. Your legs swell. Both legs swell. Usually in the evenings, when you sit down, you stand up. Your feet swell and your shoes stop to feet. God is healing you right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. There is somebody you, like that. I even see you're putting on red. You're putting on red. You've been having problems with your feet. They've been swelling. Where are you if you're putting on red with feet issues? I feel God is healing someone right now. In the name of Jesus. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. Somebody clap for Jesus. Raise your hands. Let's worship God. Let's worship God. Let's worship God. Glory monda la ba kusha la la maribu sta la la maribu kusha kelele le ba. Speak another tongue. Ori kusha la la mando robo si pata la barele kusha la 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 maribu kusha la 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 ba. Speak another tongue. Shetele le ma la 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 ba kure bo sere ma la la ma kure bo shara. Rosanda la ba kusha le le ma la 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 ba kusha le 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 ba sa la 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 la. Rosara la la ba la la mando robo si ba kasha kata la ba. If you don't have time to speak in any other language, tell God you're awesome today. You're welcome in our house tonight, God. We uphold you, Holy Spirit. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul, oh my soul, His holy name. Sing like me to the Lord.
of the Lord was with me. Father, we thank you because you shine on us. Thank you, God, because you shine on us. Thank you, God, because you shine on us. This secret is with us. You make your face shine on me.
promise some of my folk sometimes I walk with in crazy places um, I went somewhere and touched it and, and I realized that when I touched it Fanero the family did not have a portion of it so I said okay today I'm going to give full version Fanero, hallelujah <laughs> praise God something is going to happen in your life I'm not encouraging you <laughs> I'm telling you Hallelujah. Be informed. Tell your neighbor, be informed. That you're not coming out of this room the same the way you came. Hallelujah. Something remarkable is happening in your life. Come on, say those heavy words. Tell them something remarkable is happening in your life. Tell them one more time. Tell them something remarkable is happening in your life. Tell them you're not going out the same way that you came. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 24. Let's begin from verse 27. Luke 24. Ow! Sorry. It was a jacking of the Holy Ghost. Even you, in the middle, it will come. And the Bible says, And beginning at Moses, uh and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And the Bible says, And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as he would have gone farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is first spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and broke and gave to it to them. And the Bible says, And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And the Bible says, and they say to one another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened to us the scriptures. And the Bible says, and they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them. And the Bible says, 
saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And the Bible says, And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of them in the breaking of the bread. And the Bible says, And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Hallelujah. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a what? A spirit. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Now, if you read Luke 24, from the first verse, you realize it begins at the point when rumor starts to move along that they are going to the sepulcher to take spices that they might prepare the dead body. They reach the sepulcher and they find that the guy is gone and the stone is what? Rolled away from the sepulcher. Hallelujah. And I chose Luke because there is a certain order of the spirit I want to follow. So if you know very well about Luke is that he is very careful about the order of things from the very first. Hallelujah. Very, the very way we can have certainty. You all know that. So they find the stone rolled away. And they don't find him there. Hallelujah. And some turn in their sadness. Uh, where is this guy? Some think that the, the, guy has been, the body has been taken or stolen. And angels appear to them. And then they bow to the angels. And the angels tell them, hey, know you not what was written? Do, why do you seek for the living among the dead? Don't you remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee and told you that the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified on the, the third day he shall rise again? And then it was revealed unto them the next verse that they remembered his words and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. And it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. Now their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. So, arose then Peter, ran unto the sepulchre, stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. In other words, when he reached into the, the, the tomb and he didn't see nothing, he went back very what? Confused. Hallelujah. And so it's out of there that... Later on, if you continue to read, you realize that these other disciples, they moved along also. Hallelujah. And two guys are walking back. They are sad at the crucifixion of Jesus. They don't see him in the tomb. They don't know what to do. There's another group of guys like that. Now, the Bible clearly tells us, while they are walking by themselves sadly, hallelujah, they communed together and reasoned. Jesus himself drew near and went with them. So that means when Jesus joined them, they did not know that Jesus had joined them. So the Bible says they drew near, but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And the Bible says, and as he said unto them, what manner of communication are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? Why are you sad? And the next verse says, and one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering him, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And hast thou not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he says, And he said unto him, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. And the Bible says, And how the chief priests of our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. And, but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this today is a sad day since these things were done. Uh -huh. Yeah, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. Right? And certain of them which were with us sent to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. You see? So in the story it means that when the women go in the morning to prepare the body, they find nothing. They come back, they tell these other guys. They also, some of their group goes and they find nothing. And that's the sadness. And Jesus says them, said unto them, uh -huh, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. And the next line says, O oh, not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into glory. He's asking them a question. Now, this is where we began from. And there's a reason why I began from there. Hallelujah. But I needed to go a bit back for some of you who don't read the Bible. <laughs> so, he begins at Moses. 
And the Bible says, and he expounds and to them all the scripture, in all the scriptures, the things concerning him. Hallelujah. And when they are walking with him, they start to hear things. This is Jesus Christ. He's hid from them. They don't know that he's Jesus. He's talking to them about Jesus. But they don't know that he's talking about himself. Are we together? And the Bible says that they start walking together. They start walking together. They're hearing. They enjoy the conversation. They tell the guy, Aya, it's evening, brother. Because the Bible says it seemed as though he, went, he was going afar. In other words, after the conversation and escorting them to the city where they were supposed to dwell, their homes, Jesus appeared like he was continuing his journey. Hallelujah. So, the Bible says in 29, they what? They constrained him saying, abide with us for it is toward evening and the day is fast spent and he went in to tarry with them. But the reason why these guys want Jesus to tarry with them is not because they are necessarily hospitable people. It's because there were certain things that he was saying. Tell anybody there were certain things that he was saying. And they were beautiful. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible tells us that as they sit at meat, he breaks bread. And he gives it to them. And their, uh, their eyes are what? Open. And they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And the Bible says, and they say to one another. This is the reason why they brought the guy into the house. The Bible says, they say to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? While he opened to us the scriptures? In other words, when they were walking, something inside them was stirring up. There was something they were hearing, and their hearts were burning. That is stuff they don't teach in Bible school. Bible school is wonderful. I would recommend everyone to have Bible school. That's why we have school of ministry. Are you hearing me? But there are things that you, you owe. The Bible says something burned inside there. Hallelujah. When Jesus was talking to them, there was something burning inside there. He was not speaking like any other normal man. He might have been speaking normal words. Words with 26 letters. Are you hearing me? In the very language and speech they understand. But the power by which the Christ spoke, the Bible says, it stirred up their spirits to degrees and forms like never before. And these are the guys now testifying, saying, there is something inside this guy. Every time he speaks, something is stirring up in us. The Bible says that as he spoke and he talked with them, something burned within them. 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 They say, ah, you know what? You're going to fudge and stay here. So you seeing why they, have, they want the guy to stay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that was now after they realized that it was Christ. But before that, they have not understood or even realized that they were dealing with Jesus Christ. But there were certain things coming out of the man's spirit. Hallelujah. That were different from the people they were related with and the words being spoken and what they were doing to their soul. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ was amidst them and they knew not. Now the Bible tells us, when he breaks bread, they know him, he vanishes. When he vanishes, that's when they realize, no, this was the thing inside. Now I came to talk about that thing. 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 Whether you're a preacher, you need it. Whether you are a worshiper, you need it. Whether you are an intercessor, you need it. Whether you are a businessman, you need that thing. Whether you are the best consultant in the world, you need that thing. Whether you are the best engineer there is, you need that thing. Whether you play drums, you need that thing. Whether you are an usher, you need that thing. That thing has a distinctive mark on your spirit. That every time you're around somebody, when your words come out, something starts to burn inside them. Tell your neighbor they're talking about me. Tell your and tell them they're talking about me. You can't have that thing and go for an interview and fail. 
Because while anybody can answer the same answers you're giving, you're giving answers while burning their souls. Hallelujah. You can't sit on a business deal, a multi-million dollar business deal, and somebody's speaking, and they're hearing you, and something they ain't tell them no. There's something about this woman. There's something about this guy. Yes, he looks different, but hey, when he speaks, something inside us. Paul needed the thing. Jesus needed it. I just read it for you. When Paul comes to the gospel, he says that my language and my speech were not by the persuasive or plausible words of men. But they were in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. The power of God operating on me. And he says, and, and staring up in my ears, the most holy emotions. And the Bible says, and that's persuading them. Paul needed it. Jesus needed it. You need it. Hallelujah. Even if you're a politician, you need it. You just stand before men and tell them, vote me. And they say, did not our hearts burn when he said, vote me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, tell your neighbor that thing. Tell your neighbor that thing. Tell your neighbor that thing. It's inside me. Start saying it. Say it. It's inside me. That thing is inside me. It's, it's inside me. Hey, Rimanto Robo Zibala Koshe Telebaya. Sometimes when we are preaching, the power of God goes through men even as we are preaching. Because it's a fire. These words are not just light. Hallelujah. If I decided right now, deliberately, to say, that I'm releasing more of it. Some of you won't hear this at the end of the service. Hallelujah. Why? Because it's inside me and you. Why do we fail interviews? Why do we fail to land deals? Why do we fail to, to win souls? Why do we fail to convince men? Because we are using human language. We are using human abilities. But when you have that thing, when you activate that thing, Something about your life changes. Hallelujah. 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 And that's why I, I tell myself every time, I don't speak no more words. I don't speak no more words. They come with a certain power. Hallelujah. I don't just speak no more words. Something inside me has to bring something out that will burn a man's spirit. And bring them to conviction. Hallelujah. If they have to walk out of sin, they'll walk out of sin. If they have to, 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 to walk into what God has promised them and has established them to have, they will walk into it. Why? Because I must switch on that thing. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I have that thing. I have that thing. Let's go a bit deeper. I'm going to make a statement and I'll qualify it. It's hard, but it's going to become simple. And it goes like this. There's a difference between Jesus appearing to a man, right? And Jesus being present, yet seen by certain men and not seen by others. Do you understand? Can I say it again? Let me use simpler English. When Jesus came back to the world when he returned after the death and resurrection. He, the Bible uses, let me show you some Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. <laughs> Look at the, 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 the way Paul renders it, 15 verse 3. Let me show you how Paul renders it. Paul says, I have delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Listen, he is delivering, tell your neighbor, he's delivering what he received. So Paul is saying, I delivered unto you first of all that which I received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Right? And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas, number one. Seen of the twelve. 
And after that, he was seen of about 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remaineth until this present, but some are fallen asleep. Now listen to the language. Paul says, I am giving you what I received by the Spirit. I'm, I'm not following a story. I was walking in the Spirit, and I saw the chronological order of Jesus being seen in the Spirit realm. This is not Paul carrying another story as it was given to him by another person. No, he's telling you, actually what I'm sharing right now, I received of God. I was praying, and God in a vision showed me that this was the order of the Spirit. Kephas saw him first, then another what? Of the twelve, and then the five thousand. He saw the order, the chronological order of Jesus appearing and men seeing him in that order. He said, I'm telling you what I received by the Holy Spirit. That means that, be not mistaken, Paul is not telling you that he is following a narration that he received from Matthew. Remember, he says like a child born out of time. He says, for, he, he, he felt it so absurd that he didn't have the opportunity to walk in the days the apostles, the twelve walked. Paul was not in the time of Jesus with the twelve. That's why he always regarded one, himself as one born out of due time. Hallelujah. That's what he says. He says, as one who was born. He says, out of what? Of due time. Now, he is praying and seeking God. And God shows him a revelation of the death, crucifixion, and resurrection. As it was. So he says, I received. Praise the Lord. He says, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. In other words, he received it by God communicating to his spirit. In the spirit realm, he sees Jesus dying for our sins according to the scriptures. That means that he was walking in the spirit, reconciling what he was seeing by the spirit and what was written by the scriptures. And how he was buried and how he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. And he says, and he was seen by Kephas. Now, now, let me show you something powerful. He should have said, and he appeared unto Kephas. The Bible says he was seen by Kephas. Are you hearing me? Then the Bible says, then he was seen of the twelve. Then he's seen by the five thousand. That means to some he wasn't visible. Do you understand what I'm saying? He was seen. He was seen. Now, let me first show you something that will shock you. If you read the scriptures, they, they are home. They are tiring with Jesus. He breaks bread. He disappears out of their sight. When he disappears out of their sight, immediately they go to Jerusalem. I'll come back to that later. Underline it. The scriptures tell us, when they go there, they tell him, Jesus is raised. And he was seen by Simon. Are you hearing? He was seen by Simon. Now, they are not saying that we saw him. They are saying Simon saw him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Paul also comes in Corinth. And he tells you, he was first seen by Simon, Kephas. But on record, we don't have any narration in scripture where Peter is meeting Jesus. That means that when they were communing with him, and he breaks bread... And then they anoint him and he vanishes. They are lifted in the spirit and carry testimony of who saw. No. Some of you have heard stories of devil worshippers. People who go underground, eh? Underwater. They tell you that... One time I was listening to radio about a girl and she was saying that when you're from hell, you can tell your own. She says, when, when you're from here, when from, you're from there, there's something that you can look at your own and say, this one is ours. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because there's something about them that shows. Are you hearing me? There is no biblical testimony of Jesus personally appearing to Peter. What we carry in the story was that he comes and stoops into the tomb, sees nothing, and he walks away. Now, as he walks away, this is why I believe it happened. 
God Jesus appears to him. Are you hearing me? He sees the Lord. After seeing the Lord, these guys continue with the Lord. He breaks bread. When he breaks bread, they get the revelation. They are carried in the spirit realm. And in the spirit, they don't just see the Christ, but they bear witness that actually Cephas saw him before us. That is powerful. That is very powerful. And that's when I got to know that the order of the spirit honors the men which see him before others. God respected that order. When Paul years later comes in the same account, carried by the Holy Ghost, he sees Kephas first. That was an eternal truth standing forever that Kephas saw our Lord in the Spirit. But the story is clear. He didn't, he didn't go to them and tell them, I've seen the Lord Jesus. He went back and kept quiet. Because he didn't know how to tell them he saw somebody who is not visible. Are you hearing me? But this one, these guys, they sat with him. Things burnt into them. As he was speaking, their word, his words were burning them. And the Bible says, the moment he broke bread, and they realized that he's the one, and he vanished. You see, it was night, they had told him to tarry. The Bible says, immediately, they went to Jerusalem. Immediately. Are you hearing me? Now, the most amazing thing about this is they went to testify that the man is alive even without proof. Because what they experienced in his presence didn't need physical appearance. The man had raised. If you want to know how much they believed, they were willing to move that night when they were already tired from moving. That thing I told you when it enters your spirit, you can't sleep. Tell your neighbor, when it comes, you can't sleep. When it gets a hold of your soul, you can't sleep. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. So now, here's the wonderful news. They come and they say, if they don't bear witness with us, Peter is their closest. For us, we are distant. We are just the... Uh, Guys outside the peripheral areas, but they are, so they are, they are, Peter is one of them. And they say, the Lord is risen indeed. And as appear to Simon, ask him. Because you might not believe us, you might not understand where we are coming from, but this is your own. You were with him, you ate with him, you did everything together with him. Ask Simon if he didn't see the Lord. Why? Because when they came, they didn't only come with a testimony of having seen Jesus. They saw even Simon had seen Jesus before they saw him. How could Simon say no? How could Simon say no? But it's interesting that the Bible says he came to his own. And to they which were not his own, they saw him not. Like he can walk with men and they don't know that they're talking to him. Or that he is God, he's Jesus Christ. There is a big possibility that when Jesus was raised, his own could see him, could feel him, could touch him. But the men outside couldn't see him. That is why the language they are used in the rendering is he was seen. He was seen. That means that in that same place, there were people who could not see him. Now, here is my fear. The fear of finding 12 guys talking and patting another guy. Ah, but he's not, you're not seeing him, but they are feeling him and they are touching him. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. They are feeling him. They are touching him. They are experiencing him. He is with them. They can see that Jesus is there. But to the men outside, they don't see. And you realize that this vision was not a permanent vision. There were moments they would not see him as Christ. That's why later in John, I think 21, they are fishing. After he has appeared to the twelve, after Scephus has seen him, again they go fishing the whole night and they catch nothing. 
he comes again by the sea and tells them, children, have ye had anything to eat? And they tell him, no. At that point again, he's hid from them. He's not Jesus. They don't know that this is Jesus. Yet he had appeared to them a few days ago. But he started to live in the transition of terrestrial, celestial. But with the reality of glory, defining everything that you need to approve him celestial, yet terrestrial. To him it's a small thing that his body should be felt and his nails should be touched. If he knows that everything physical was created by the things which are not seen, and the reality and substance of the things that are not seen brought about the things which do appear, he can make you feel terrestrial like he can make you feel celestial. They are called spiritual experiences. The prophet says that, the prophet says that an angel came and got coals of fire and threw them on my mouth. And he says, thou hast been cleansed. Those were not physical. They were spiritual calls. But to the man of the spirit, they expressed the reality. Are you hearing me? Some people think that reality is drawn only in the physical realm, the metaphysical world. That's a fallen state of interpretation of the things of God. God is more real as spirit than he is physically. Hallelujah. The physical form of any man which is of the spirit is a lesser reality than the spiritual form. That is why even when we are reading the Bible, he tells us that we behold like in a mirror the glory of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, here's the thing that many Christians should and ought to understand. When they say his spirit, he tells them, touch me. They can feel him. And he tells them, look, I'm Jesus. I'm real. I'm real. But again, the Bible says, he's seen by them. That means the other guys are not seeing him. But they can feel him. John comes in the same dispensation. Which saw the beginning. He says, that which we have seen. That which we have tested. That which we have touched concerning the word of life. He says when it came to the word Jesus they touched, tested and felt him. Now, the natural man will tell me how do you feel the word? But there are men who felt the word. (laughs) How do you test the word? The, the, The man of the spirit tells you no, I actually tested him. I know how it tastes like. It's like honey to the man's lips. Hallelujah. He says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Of the word of life. He says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have held of the word of life. Next verse. He says, for the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. He was manifested unto us. And he continues to say, For that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus. So by the time they are fellowshipping, they are talking of what they have seen, touched, tested and held pertaining the word of life. That's how real Jesus was. That's how real Jesus was to them. But the shocking reality is that however much real and touchable he is to his disciples, he's not visible to them which are not his own. The irony again of finding... If, 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 if you had, 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 had examined how the guys of old who were walking on the road were looking at him, the man who has just died three days ago, And they can't identify him. They can't identify him. The Bible says it was held from them to know him. Just think about it. Three days and they can't identify the guy. They are even talking about. Hallelujah. Then he says, okay. There's a transition from the time a man hears me. Yes, the words can burn their spirit. And that is wonderful. To the time when I'm revealed to that man. He says, okay. 
I can't finish this until I break bread. I can't finish this until I break bread. So the Bible says they sit at meat, then they break bread. (laughs) They sit at meat, then they break bread. They sit at meat, then they break bread. The Bible didn't say they sat at bread and... No, the Bible says they sit at meat and break bread. And the Bible says, and strong meat (laughs) belongs to them which are mature. Who by reason of use, the Bible says, have exercised their senses. Their spiritual senses are exercised. He's not talking about physical senses. No. Their spiritual senses are exercised enough to feel in the spirit, to touch in the spirit, to smell in the spirit, to see in the spirit, that the reality of all the senses activated in the spirit can make them sit at meat. I don't know if they understand what I'm saying. Are you with me here? See, the challenge with the church today is we are breaking bread without meat. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. We are breaking bread without what? Without meat. Oh, for you saying, oh, when you start to eat with them. Yes, but there's a reason why the KJV maintains the word meat. That is why when Paul is dealing with the church in Corinth, he tells them that when I came to you, I wanted to give you meat. But I found that thou were babes, yet unable to partake of the meat. And he says, and I fed thee with milk. Even as babes are. He says, as a babe, desire the sincere milk of the word that you might grow therein. But as you start to grow up, you start to grow teeth. And what happens? You start eating meat. That's the beginning of broken bread. Bread breaks before men who sit at meat. Tell your neighbor, bread breaks or is broken before men who sit at meat. Banango, bamuntegera. Tell your neighbor, me, I'm understanding. My spirit is understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, we see him breaking bread. And then the revelation comes through. There must have been a manner in which the Christ breaks bread. But that the man of the spirit whose senses were activated could pick and say, this is the manner in which the Lord breaks bread. At meat. Hallelujah. So when you're talking about Holy Communion, you remember Holy Communion? Why it is Holy Communion? Why it is Communion Holy? Why it's the holiest form of communion? It is the breaking of bread. The representation of his body. That was given for you and me. It is the representation of his blood. He says as a seal of the New Testament. He says for this is my blood in the new covenant. My blood in the new covenant. My blood in the new covenant. And he tells them do this always in remembrance of me. The moment you're saying that I'm remembering the Christ. Understand firstly that you have to sit at me. You see let me, let me, let me help you understand something. And I'm going a bit deeper here. Jesus is, when the Bible says that he was wounded for our transgressions, right? He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. He that knew no sin became sin, that we being dead unto sins might live unto righteousness, might whose stripes were healed. Many people don't understand that the real sickness of the man then was not the disease in the body. It was the disease of ignorance. To know. To know. To know. That was the nature that the fallen man had. He did not know. He couldn't know. That was the nature of the first Adamic. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is why when the serpent comes to him and tells them that God knows that if you eat of this fruit you shall be like unto him, knowing both good and evil. The Bible is very clear. Adam and Eve didn't know that they were being lied to because they didn't know it all. The first Adam did not know it all. He could be lied to because the circumference of his knowledge had a certain end. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Deception begins when the whole truth cannot be comprehended by the spirit of the man to whom deception comes. You can only lie to me because I don't know the whole story. But if I know the whole story, you cannot lie to me. That is why when Paul comes to the nature of the new creature, he says, brethren, we are not ignorant of these devices because we are past the place of just progressively knowing. We carry the knowledge which is of God. He's we carry the full knowledge of God. We carry the epignosis. He says, you have put on the new man, which after him has been renewed in the epignosis. He says, who has known the mind of Christ that he might instruct him? He says, who has known him? But he says, but we have the mind which is of Christ. He says, you have an unction from on high. He says, you know all things. Do you know what it means to know all things? It means that the devil now cannot deceive you. You cannot be under the spirit of deception anymore. Now, this can only be a faith experience for it to carry the grace. It I mean that because we cannot be deceived, that many of our own are not deceived. In fact, there is still deception going in the world because faith is not revealed in that aspect. Let me tell you something I learned about knowledge. Knowledge is two-way. Praise God. When a man has crossed over into the life of the spirit. The first way is the hypnosis experience, right? What you know perfectly and complete in him. And the progressive experience. What enlightens and six manifestation of what you already know. Are you with me? That's the two ways of knowledge. Now, it's easy for the spirit of a man to adapt and mutate around what is progressive because that's how we were taught when we were growing up. You went to class every day and they started to teach you A, A, B, B, C, C, A, A, E, O, U. Then you all repeated, ah, eh. so eh, every time you realize in that kind of progressive knowledge, the one which is teaching is ahead of you. So everything entering your soul is just an affirmation. But when you're dealing with a man who is advanced in knowledge, everything entering his soul is a confirmation. Because he has an unction from on high, that causes him to know all things. Hey! Let's read it. He says, one, two, three, let's go. Uh -huh. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. That is why when the Bible says, when the, Bible, when the story says that did, didn't our hearts burn when he spoke to us, right? The literal Hebrew translation is, did it, didn't our hearts alight with confirmation? <laughs> Not affirmation. But confirmation. But confirmation. But confirmation. That is why when he talks about you, he likens you to one which has gone ahead of things. He says that he which is instructed... In the things of the kingdom. He doesn't talk about he which will be instructed next week. He doesn't talk about he which might be instructed. Or he which is progressively being instructed. He talks about he which is instructed. He says that every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven. Is likened unto a man. He says that is a householder. Which bringeth forth out of his treasure. Things new and old. As in inside you. The oldest wisdom is there. The newest stuff is there. Somebody say that's me. Say that's me. Now, if the, the, the agitations of your spirit start to stir themselves up in the thought of the things that are new and old within you, because you carry the full knowledge of God, everything spoken is a confirmation of what is already affirmed in your soul. That's when hearts begin to burn. Listen, some of you didn't even understand. See, the Bible says in him all things consist. Do you know what it means for in him all things consisting? It means that in him, in Jesus, 
Everything has its order and rightful place. Which is the head of all principalities? There's a reason why the man added on which is the head of all principalities. Because the ministry of principalities, dominions, rulers and powers, the devil, is to make things out of order. To put things out of line. Are you hearing me? For the Bible says that the earth was without form and void. Tohu vabohu. But the Bible says he created not the earth void. In other words, it's not God who created the earth void and wasted. No, the devil came in and wasted it. That is a pre-Adamic period between when there is a fall of Satan and his cohorts, the angelics on the earth, and then they start to mess it up. Why? Because the psalmist says, God never created the world in what? In western emptiness. This is not God. So when the Bible says that in the beginning, uh, God, the, the earth was without form, and it was void. It doesn't mean that God is the one who made a f- who put the earth out of form and made it wasted or void. Because our God is a God of order. He's a perfect God. He's excellent. The perfection of beauty. So, the earth was in its rightful order. But the devil came and spoiled it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so... That beginning there in Genesis was God now beginning at the center when the devil had wasted things. And God said to put it back. Praise the Lord. So when the Bible tells us God has not created the world without form, wasted. This is God telling you, I could not have created something like that. It's not in the nature of God to create waste. That's why you can't be wasted. It's not in the nature to create of God to create formless. Are you hearing me? You you can't be formless. Refuse to have a formless child in the name of Jesus. Because it's not in the nature of God to create formless things. Are we together? It's not in the nature of God to create formless things. He cannot just wake up and create formless things. Hallelujah. So, the the devil comes and spoils it, and God has to come in as Jehovah God to make sure that he puts the world back in its own. Now, when the Bible says that in him all things consist, what does that mean? Everything has its order and its rightful place in Christ. When a man is in Christ, things find their order. Are you hearing me? When you carry the mind of Christ, everywhere you go, and things are out of order. There's a stirring up in your spirit to put order. That's the excellent spirit. That's greatness. Are you hearing me? That's why the foundations of the world are out of course. Because men are hid from understanding and knowledge. But when understanding and knowledge comes, the foundations are restored. You see our primary responsibility now? Our primary responsibility is to put in order things. That's why I told the man, replenish the earth. Put it back in order. You know, the devil comes to destroy. But our primary responsibility is to put it in order. So when the Bible says that in him, Jesus, all things consist, which is the head of all principalities, which is the head of all principalities, which is the head of all principalities, which is the head of all principalities. Let me, let me explain that. It means that it doesn't matter what is spoiled, is above it. And however spoiled it looks like, there is still an order in him that can restore it. Because he's above anything that can spoil it. Somebody say amen. I said he's above anything that can spoil it. So everything in him can be put in order. Because even if on the world it seems like it's wasted. Huh? To God it's already in order. He doesn't see it as wasted. Because the, 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 the mind... And authority that spoils is of lower rank from the mind and spirit that keeps these things in order. That is why when you see through those eyes, even if somebody looks like they are wasted, to God they can be holy. The Bible says that he calleth the living out of the dead and he calleth the things that are not as though they are. That is his nature. Do you know why Joshua and Caleb overtook the land? 
The Bible says that God first sent spies there. And the Bible says they came back with a false report. They didn't come back with the wrong report. <laughs> no. They, they came back with a false report. There's a difference. They rehearsed facts, not truth. And the more they continue to rehearse facts, God compared the facts they're rehearsing and the truth he knows about the land to be inherited. He says these ones, no. The Bible says he opened the ground and the ground swallowed them up. Because they came with a false report. Then Joshua and Caleb also enter. Hallelujah. They see a cathedral. They look at the bar and see children's church. Are you hearing me? They walk on a dusty road like Kampala and see the cleanest city. They see green everywhere. The echo, ay, 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 the ecological area is set right. The atmosphere is right. When they see that, he says that none of these guys shall inherit the promised land. But for my servants, Joshua and Caleb, they shall. He says, for in them, he says, I have found a different spirit. Do you know why we don't want to live in America? It's because America is first world and Uganda is super first world. Hey! That the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you, which is in Christ. David said, I had fainted if I had not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in Uganda. Tell your neighbor Uganda is not dusty. Tell them Uganda is not corrupt. Tell them Uganda is holy. It is a set apart nation. We are a peculiar people. There is something inside us. Hey, tell him we have that thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wait. The Dauphinero build its home. People are going to say, is that America? And we'll tell him, no. You remember when we used to watch superhero movies? When Superman would come in the air and they say, is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's... That's how they are going to say. Is that building in America? Is it in Australia? No, it is in Uganda. And God loves such places. Least expected. He looks at our master and he says no. He cannot come from Athens. He cannot come from Tassa, Cilicia. He says, can any good come out? And he says, that's where I want to build it. It's beautiful. When it doesn't have any story to it. Says that when it gets a story, they can say it is not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. Say the Lord of hosts. They'll get aeroplanes and come to see it here. If you're a preacher, lambano this. <laughs> For your own ministry. If you're a businesswoman, lambano it. For your business. If you're a student, lambano it. For your university. If you're a mother, get it for your children. If you're a father, receive it for your son. That's the only reason why David could not faint. Because he had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He says, for our light affliction, which are or is but for a moment, 
He says it cannot be compared. Corruption is a light affliction. Disease is a light affliction. Poverty is a light affliction. He says for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, work, even if you have cancer, God called it a light affliction. Even if they said you have HIV, even if you look like you lost everything on your account, God says which is but for a moment. He says it worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. How? He said, next verse. How? How? While, while, tell your neighbor, while we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, they are eternal. Next verse. He says, for we know that if our earthly Uganda was dissolved, we have a building. We have Zion. For the first time, they are going to see super first class citizens living in a third world country. We are going to build ministries men in first world don't have. We are going to drive cars men in first world don't have. We are going to build houses men in first world don't have. We are going to have an education system. We are going to flow in a glory that men in the first world won't have. Scripture is clear. The first shall be the... So then you ask me, what word do you have for the man in the first world? Simple. Leave first world and come to Zion. Which is the city of God. To the company of innumerable angels. To the spirits of just men made perfect. To Jesus the mediator of the covenant. Whose blood speaketh better things. Than the blood of Cain. And Abel. Let me tell you. Every time I walk around Kampala Road. I envision skyscrapers. And I see Christian names. I don't see Muslims. Get it if you want. I get into a car and I hit a ditch. And I say no. This is a triple courage. This is a quadruple carrier. In the name of Jesus. Start speaking. Tell your neighbor, start speaking. About your nation. Even when I travel, they know me. We hear there is a lot of war in Uganda. I tell them, no. It's the most peaceful place on the earth. You should come and see. It's very peaceful. That's what kept Abraham restless. He says he sojourned with the patriarchs. Looking for a city. Whose founder and builder was the Lord. The moment he dwelt there. He settled. He tells him, leave your own country. Your kinsmen, go to a land I will show you. He enters Canaan. What is the Hebrew word for Canaan? Lowly place. God puts him there. In a lowly place. And he tells him, Otuse. Because I make big things out of empty places. I start creating when I see west. When you're out of form, then I begin. That is why if you see things shapeless in your life, you are the right candidate. In the beginning, the earth was without form or void. He says something needs to be created here. He says, for the spirit of the Lord was hovering. Hey, hey. That's why when Paul sees West form, he says, for my, his strength is made perfect in my witness. Hey, he doesn't, he doesn't create another way. No, 
the Bible says, He will with the same thing create a way. Where there was weakness, God is going to turn into strength. And He's not going to need to break out another door. He's going to use the same thing that frustrated you. What was weakness becomes strength. He says there is no temptation that has taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. He says, who will not suffer you to be tempted? Above all, you're able. But will with the temptation, that very temptation, he says he will make a way to escape. Sani wa kurumbira wali no itawali. Mukama takume nyirao. Akuzao e nyini na akuyisao. Let me say it in English. If the devil attacks you through you there, through, if he attacks you through that door, God is not interested in creating another world. He will appear like he's running. I said he will appear like he's running. Because he's not running, he will turn to that very, the very door. The devil opened and he will go through it as God. Tell your neighbor there is hope with you. Mugumiya Mugambe, there is hope with you. It's not yet over. Tell your neighbor it's not yet over. Tell him one more time it's not yet over. It's not. It's not. It's not. That's what we used to say. Who has the final say? Not your government. Not that she man. Not that she woman. Not the radio. Not newspapers. Not internet. Not Facebook. Not Twitter. Not WhatsApp. That's why when Paul gets into weakness, he says, I count it all but joy. Because he knows what is coming up. I remember when we were 1,800 and they wrote an article on us. When we were 1,800 and a man of God came and told me, you're done. Within three, four months, we grew to more than 3,000. When we were still at the MTN Arena. When they were telling us, you're done. We grew to more than 3,000 during that time. When, when they knew. I remember when we were growing up, they said, hey, you guy, now you're not buying a car, now you're on a border border. You tell them, don't worry, you don't know me. You don't know me. I'm on a border for purpose. I'm not like you. I don't answer simple sentences. The Bible says, I answer hard sentences. Do you know what it means to answer hard sentences? It means you're unpredictable. When they think you're done, that's the day you begin. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Why? Because you have the thing. When they had it coming from the man, the Bible says they could not sleep that night. That means you have something that can make a man lose sleep. You have something that can make a man lose appetite. You have something that can make a man lose peace. You have something that can make a man lose everything he has to get it. Because it's indescribable. It's inside your system. Paul called it this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellence of what? Did he say suffering? That the excellence of what? Might be of the Lord. So they come to him and he tells them, your, your fathers, John 6, I'll finish with that. John 6, 40. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. John 6, 35. Let me show you that and we'll finish. He says, and Jesus said unto them, 
I am the bread. <laughs> that thing I broke and their eyes opened. I am it. I am it. And he says, he that cometh to me. Now, I never want you to forget this. Shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. They are sitting before fish and bread to eat and consume. Digestive system taken out. And that day they sit before one by whom they will never thirst to hunger. It means they are going to be full all the days of their lives. Some of you, let me explain what it means to be full of the Holy Spirit. Full of the Holy Spirit means you can function in the Holy Ghost any time. Full of bread means you can split mystery any time. And to whom speaketh the words of God, the Bible says to him is given an anointing without measure. Hey, that means that when you're flowing in that grace, the anointing on your life cannot be measured. If God can't measure the anointing on... Come on. If God can't measure the anointing on your life, how can you limit your destiny? That's why anything in Fanero is possible. Anything. Because we speak the words of God. And we carry an anointing without measure. Let me tell you. Be conscious. Condition your spirit to know that with me anything is possible. Because I have him with whom all things are possible. He has given me an anointing without measure. He tells them, I'm that bread that was broken. That means if I'm broken, all of these things you're seeing, wounded for transgression, all of that was a knowledge issue. Disease comes because we don't know. Hosea 4, 6. My people perish because they lack knowledge. And what is perpetual sickness? Death, right? Sickness brings death. And he says, my people die because they lack knowledge. Sickness is a knowledge issue. When you know the truth, truth sets you free. He sent his word and did what? Heal their disease. That's the truth. That is why, how many of you ever since you started coming to this ministry stopped falling sick? Wanika, look. You just stop. Why? Because you're feeding yourself every day. He says these words are life to them that find them and medicine to their bodies. You can't be swallowing medicine every day. Divine medicine every day. And the life which is of God and you fall sick. I refuse to fall sick. Tell your neighbor I refuse to fall sick. I'm not a sick person. I'm not a sickly person. In the name of Jesus. Why? Because the words I receive, they are life. And their health to my flesh. Their health. Every time you sit under these words, they keep you healthy. They keep you healthy. So the miracle and mystery of the new creature is divine health, not healing. Health. Don't fall sick in the first place. Tell anybody they're talking about me right there. Chimogambe. I want to bring this to a close. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, all this beating... All this wounding, all these things that are going through. He's trying to, he's breaking the body to open their eyes to see him. He's breaking the body to open their eyes to see him. Let's continue in John 6, 48. He says, I am that bread of life. And he says, next verse, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and they are what and they are dead this is the bread which cometh from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die manna is for the wilderness it is for surviving beings not eternal beings hallelujah bread is for eternal beings but by the times it transitions into that bread of where over man hungereth not neither thirst anymore it must be at meat. It must be at meat. That's why his body was broken. His body was broken. 
Jesus died, was crucified for one thing only, that you will see him. Healing was a part of seeing him. It wasn't the total sum and his ultimate mind. It was just what had to follow, seeing him. I mean, if this man gets out of the grave, and they which were dead, the Bible says, were seen walking in the city. Dead men were seen walking in the city. Because he came out with life. And that life permitted through the grounds and, 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 and went even where he had not planned. And men received life because the Son of Man touched the ground with a lifeless body. Hallelujah. So I see that the, the, the body was broken for us to see. Holy communion is men seeing. It's men seeing. But we have to sit at meat. We have to sit at meat. We have to sit at meat. In other words, God has to launch us into his depth of knowledge to see bread break. To see bread break. To see bread break. Now, you and I are realizing now, or it is revealed now finally, that that is the one distinctive mark of the Christ. That is why these men could not sleep. They saw him. When a man sees God, he preaches the gospel. He witnesses. He loves. He forgives. He believes. Because he has seen God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The revelation, that's why the Bible speaks of the glory that shall be revealed at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You remember that old hymn we used to sing? When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory sheds on our way. Did you see that? When we walk with the Lord, there is a glory He starts to shed on your way. That glory translates into something inside you. That every time you start to speak, you stir up the spirits of men. That man can't fail to win a soul. That man can't fail to build a ministry. That man cannot worry about his business. That man cannot worry about a job. Because he has something they need. He's an answer to men's prayer. When they sit in an interview, they answer men's prayers. When they are asked questions, they answer men's prayers. When they are seated in their business consultancies and their uh, management systems, they are answering prayer. Because inside there is something. There is something. There is something. I have seen that the ultimate call for you and I as a child of God is to bring order back to the world that is out of order. And we have everything it takes to put the world in order. We have it. We have it. We have everything it takes to put the world in order. Everything it takes. Why? Because we have what created the world. How can we fail? Ask your neighbor, how can you fail? Ask them again, how can you fail? And I want you to bow your heads. Because right now, I want you to speak to your heart right now. Speak in other tongues. Tonight, by the reason of the anointing upon my life, by the Holy Spirit, I'm stirring that thing. I'm stirring it. There it is. Power of the Holy Ghost! Speak in other tongues. Ancient words. Speak in other tongues. Long preserved for our world. In this world, bring them in front. Every sound with God's own heart. Let the ancient words. In her 
Speak in other tongues. Ancient words. Give me your hand. Ever to receive it. Changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impact. Words of life, words of hope, keep us strength, help us call this world where we will extend who can this hope. I see fire coming out of people's mouths. Fire, 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 fire! Yes! When the world hears you, oh, they will bow to the name of Jesus. trying to speak and your mouth couldn't speak the question is why were you being limited in the spirit realm to articulate the convictions of your soul I decree and I declare that from today your tongue has free course in the spirit realm now I want to pray for the sick. Put your hand where it's hurting. If you have glasses, put them up for a second and put your hands on your eyes. If you have hearing aids, remove them for one second. God is healing the sick. I see a brother with a clutch. Let me come there. God is healing the sick. What happened? What happened to you? Father, in the name of Jesus, we command healing to this leg. We command pain to live right now. Start to step on it. Start to step on it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Start to step on it. Start walking. Somebody clap for Jesus. 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 
Somebody clap for Jesus. Somebody clap for Jesus. Somebody clap for Jesus. Somebody clap for Jesus. Turn this side. Clap for Jesus. 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 Come. Clap for Jesus. 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 Listen. Give him a mic. What had happened? He's crying. Praise the Lord. Let's listen. On Let's fr- listen. Friday last week I got an accident. On Friday last week he had an accident. And I fractured my leg. He fractured his leg on Friday last week. Including my skull. Including the what? The skull. The skull. Uh-huh. And I got they say that blood poured into my brain. Mm-hmm. But when I got the accident, mm. my father sent Pastor Brian mm. to pray for me. Mm. And I believe I accepted him mm. in the name of my father. Mm-hmm. They took CT, CT scans and they said that I have so many fractures. They took CT scans and they said he had so many fractures. And that because of the blood in my head, I will not be able to talk. And uh, because of the what? The blood in my brain. Wait, wait, because of the what? The blood in my brain. So you came, when you came, you couldn't talk? I, I had difficulty in talking. You couldn't talk? Yes, sir. Now you're talking. Uh-huh. They also said I would be epileptic. They, would say, they said you, are, you would be epileptic. Yes. Let us see whether you will be. Uh huh. This leg has been paining me so hardly. It has been paining you so hard because of the. They told me that I broke it into two, and also the ankle bones. You broke it twice, and they said it will take three to one year for it to mold up. How many? Three, one year to three months. Three months to one year. Yes. That's what they told you. Yes. And just from last Friday, you're walking. Walk again and I see. <laughs> Tell your neighbor the devil is a liar. Come and walk with me on the pulpit. Remove her. <laughs> they, they told him three. <laughs> three to one year. <laughs> Love at the devil! Love at the devil! Somebody say, I have the life which is of God inside me. They told him he needed three months to one year. He fractured his leg last Friday with multiple fractures. He had a damage to his head and they told him he would never talk again. And he's talking. Now, you imagine what is happening to your business. Just imagine what is happening to your marriage. Imagine what is happening to that virus. Imagine what is happening to that bacteria. Imagine imagine what is happening to witchcraft. Hey! This guy is in setup. He serves in setup here. He is a servant of God. There are things God can't allow. Tomorrow, go. I know you're not working well because they tied something here. Eh? I feel it. It's hard. Go and they untie it. <laughs> you can go and sit, sir. Have your cane. Put it in the sky and tell God I thank you. <laughs> you can go and sit. Hallelujah. That is exactly what is happening to your situation. They said it was going to take one year. But it is fixed now. They said it was going to take one week.
but it's going to be fixed now. They said it was going to take 10 years, but God is putting it in order right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I see God healing blind eyes. Short-sightedness is leaving right now. Deaf ears are opening. If your, if your eyesight just cleared, put up your hand wherever you are. If your eyesight just cleared, my God, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Praise God. Put down. Somebody came with a deaf left ear. Your ear couldn't hear the left. But I just saw God operating it. Put up your hand if you. It has been healed. Come and how long has it been? Come, come and tell me. Who else? Come and tell me. How long has it been? Give him a mic. How long has it been? I got an issue last week for one week. Mm. And it has been blocked and paining me a lot. Now it's clear. Now it's clear. You can hear 100%. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. I see diabetes living. Diabetes is living right now. High blood pressure. It's coming down in the name of Jesus Christ. To normalcy. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody around there, I see somebody is a checked. God is brother with a checked shirt. Checked white. That white checked. Put up your hand if you're the one. Brother with a white checked. You, you're the one who's looking. No, no, that brother with a white checked shirt. Yeah, yes. Yes. I see that your teeth has not have not been healthy. Is it true? How long has it been? Two years. God has told me he's restoring your whole system. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Brother with a black shirt. Brother with a black shirt. Behind the... Yes, you. Have you had a breathing problem a few days ago in the lungs? Yes, I had it. Eh? Yes. Speak louder. How long has it been? Uh, for three months. Your lungs have been... Yes, God is telling me I'm clearing them. Somebody clap for Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041 466 4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com you can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org or better still feel free to join us every thursday for our weekly fellowships at uma multipurpose hall from 5 p.m to 8 p.m you can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash fenero fenero make manifest